Greetings from Colorado, where the skies are still dark at night and you can see the Milky Way. This is Touring the Night Sky with Zachary Singer. If it's April or May, you should be looking at Leo. Leo the Lion is a really cool constellation. It's bright, easily recognizable from its shape, and has some amazing targets for folks with even a small telescope. It also makes an important landmark for finding neighboring constellations that aren't as easy. This video will show you what Leo looks like, where and when to look for it, and at the end, a quick look at some of those targets. Let's get going. As you might expect from a constellation with a name like Leo, it's lion-shaped. The lion's head, mane, and chest, the business end of the lion, are represented in a part of the constellation known as the question mark. It's really a backwards question mark, but that's okay. Here's Regulus. Finding this bright star first will help you find the rest of the question mark, which sits right above it. It's a 15 degree span from Regulus to the top of the lion's head. That's about half again the width of your fist when you hold it out at arm's length. Confirming the size will help you identify this part of Leo until you get used to seeing it. We'll find the lion's body and tail to the east or left of the lion's head. Starting at Regulus again, it's about the same distance to Leo's hips as it was to the top of his head. A little farther east, we see the lion's tail, the bright star Denebola. It stands out because it's almost as bright as Regulus, so you'll know it when you see it. While we're talking about Regulus and Denebola, let me mention that both of these are alignment stars for folks with computer-guided telescopes. Now that we have a sense of Leo's size and shape, we need to talk about where to find it. If you live in the United States, the short answer is look due south around 9.30 p.m. in mid-April. Look about 60 degrees up from the southern horizon, that is, roughly two-thirds of the way from the horizon to the top of the sky, and there's your lion. A more precise answer, though, is that these observations are for 40 degrees north latitude like Denver. If you're north of 40 degrees, just look a little bit lower or southward in your sky, and if you live to the south, look a little higher up. This works for all of North America, Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Now there's a catch. The Earth is turning. That means that if we look earlier or later than 9.30, Leo will shift to the east or west. Eastward if we look earlier, and westward if we look later. Let's check this out. Here it is an hour earlier at 8.30. Now, 9.30 as we originally had. Notice how it's moved west from the 8.30 position. The whole sky moves this way, 15 degrees westward every hour. If you remember that the distance of about 15 degrees is roughly a fist width and a half, you'll be able to anticipate Leo's location easily. So here's the view an hour later at 10.30, and now 11.30. At some point later in the wee hours, Leo will set in the west like the sun does. This movement isn't a big deal when you're expecting it, especially when you become more comfortable recognizing the constellation. One last thing about finding Leo. Like everything else in our sky, the constellation also shifts subtly westward night by night because our planet Earth slowly orbits the sun. Our planet moves roughly a degree eastward daily, so our sky shifts a degree westward when we look at the same time each night. After a month, the shift is a full 30 degrees and Leo will now sit noticeably westward. After two months, you'll find it much lower in the western sky than it is now. In practice, this means that by early July, Leo will be quite low and starting to fade into the sunset. Don't worry though, it starts reappearing in the pre-dawn sky in the fall. So, now that you can find Leo, let's see those targets I promised you. First, we've got Algeba, also known as Gamma Leonis, a bright yellowish star in Leo's mane. Even in a small telescope, you'll see that what looks like one star to your naked eyes is really two stars. This is a binary system, meaning that these two stars are actually orbiting each other like two kids playing ring around the rosy. The pair appear bright orange and are pretty close together in a telescope, so try moderate power and work upwards if you have to. By the way, the two stars look close together because they're far from us, but their orbit is actually six times wider than Pluto's distance from the Sun. Next, 
54 Leonis way up here. It's not part of Leo's outline, but it is part of the constellation. This is another binary star, but its color is strikingly different than most. A view through a telescope can show very subtle shades of blue and green. If you're new to astronomy, let me tell you that's pretty unusual. At other times, it looks like a more standard white and yellow, but even then, yellow is greenish or lemon yellow, which is still pretty rare. The stars don't really change color. It's a so-called contrast effect. That is, the colors have more to do with how your eyes are perceiving them than anything else, but it's a cool effect. Like Algeba, this one is great for small scopes. Finally, down here under Leo's hip is the famous Leo triplet of galaxies. All three are spiral galaxies like our own Milky Way, each with many billions of stars. Though they're far from us, at 35 to 42 million light years away, they're close enough to each other to be seen together in a telescope at low power. The brighter two can be spied in binoculars under a dark country sky. There are other examples of galaxies that can be seen together like this, but this group is one of the easiest for beginners, and they're bright, relatively large in your eyepiece at low power, and just plain beautiful to see. If you aim here, don't forget to use high power to see the details within each one on their own. If you want to look them up and learn more about them, look for M65, M66, and NGC3628. There are many other interesting galaxies in LEO, and more double stars too, but this will get you started. Check back here, or subscribe, and I'll have more videos like this, including a deeper look at LEO in the near future. Clear skies to you, my friends.